Howdy and welcome back for more. We are going through the final six boxes, two medium boxes, four small boxes of my library to pick what is going over there to trade up, put some big games, look in the previous videos for this, what's going on these shelves, doing quick mini reviews of the ones I've played, the ones that I haven't played that are coming up are going over here. I can't review those, so, you know, forgive whatever I put in the title or thumbnail, forgive it. I'm doing the best I can with it. Anyway, we're going to open these up and let's go. What am I forgetting? I don't know. Um, oh, oh, yeah, I've got stuff, games over there behind the camera that you can't see for like small games because I need to get a small game shelf. So these are my only shelves. There's one set of two cubes up there and I'm putting games on top. Um, they've been my only shelves for a very long time. I do need to get more, but I also try to keep a rotating library. So I don't like to go over 100 games. And if I do, not for long, unless I, I decide to turn this into more of a library collector's thing. And I'm not there at this point. All right, what do we got in here? We got some lovely stuff like paper. Don't knock over the camera. You go, man. All right. This I can't. So this is my buddy, um, Alex, over at Yeast Games. Sent Bonnie and Clyde. Made some videos on that. Got to do a real fun preview. Enjoyed it. One to four players. This is a Euro. I believe it is. Is it competitive or cooperative? It is a historical game. So if you like war games, and I say that just because of the historical aspect or historically accurate games, um, you are playing a group of workers in the early 20th century labor union stuff. I'm just going to read from the back here. Um, you, The players must cooperate to take control of the means of production. So I haven't got to play it yet. I am looking forward to it. If you're wondering why like it looks like a softer box and all that, they um, do everything in an environmentally friendly way. The quality of the games, though, from Yeast Games is outstanding. They are on the heavier side. So this is a keep for future plays so I can tell you about it. And I'm actually going to put stuff in the shelves afterward because it's too much work. Um, hostage Negotiator, I've talked about a lot. This is the Crime Wave box, but I have everything in here from the base game to all the card pack expansions to the career expansion. I have the Playmat. I'm a huge fan of Hostage Negotiator. Oh yeah, I'm also listing... What I got from my local game store, Cape Fear Games, if you want to tell you in the comments, let me know. And what I got from elsewhere um, to kind of see my collection. Everything in here, um, I've got most of it at Cape Fear Games. The base game, Crime Wave, and Career. Some of the card packs I got from there. Some of the card packs I had to get from Noble Knight Games online as well. One player game where you play as a hostage negotiator trying to talk down one of any variety of... I think the base game comes with three um, hostage holder criminal people. They're not all criminal. I guess they're criminals because they're holding hostages. But some are sad, like a guy's holding people hostage to get money to pay for his kid's health care because he can't afford insurance. Real things that happen. Anyway, you play cards, conversation cards, in order to try to talk them down or negotiate or capture and arrest them. And you win if you succeed in that. Meanwhile, hostages may be killed. They go into a hostage pool. If more than half of them are killed, you lose the game. You're trying to save their lives. The career introduces a, like, legacy, I don't know if you want to call it legacy, campaign mode, where you work through the full career of a hostage negotiator, you know, their marriage life and all that fun. Um, it's a keeper. I thoroughly enjoy my hostage negotiator games. Nemesis Void Seeders expansion. I talked about Nemesis in the previous videos. When we put that on the shelves, way up there where you can't see it, and Void Seeders actually, so Carnomorphs I didn't like because it was too gory for me. I don't like gore. Um, it was a little too gruesome for me. But Void Seeders is more like psychological. They're these aliens that come onto the ship of Nemesis and they play with your mind. So you're, you're going crazier. There are things that make your characters hallucinate and even harm themselves. So it's still kind of brutal. But this was an expansion worth getting. I got this at a game store in Ohio. I don't remember the name. It was in Chillicothe, Ohio. Void Seeders expansion. That's a keeper. Uh, Nemesis Lockdown Stretch Goals introduced the, the Chitrids as an alien race. So if you're playing Nemesis, um, 
I don't know if you can do this on the Nemesis board, but you can do it on the Lockdown board. And it's a fungus. It's a it's a killer fungus that infects and spreads across the... If there's a weird edit, I just sneezed, and you don't need a part of that. Right. Um, It's cool. I wouldn't go out of my way to get it. Void Seeders is probably the only extra alien race that I would go out of my way to get so far to this point. But I'm going to keep it, because as long as I have Lockdown, I may as well have the stretch goals with it. Nemesis OG, um, absolute keeper. It's going on my shelf. If you were to start with Nemesis or Lockdown, I still recommend Nemesis. Uh, we talked about it in the previous video. I'm not going to go too much into it. It's basically Alien as the board game. You have missions that you need to complete. If you're playing cooperatively, your mi missions might collide with each other. Yours might be to make sure the other players don't survive or to make sure that everyone survives. Nobody knows anyone else's mission, so there's a sense of paranoia. When you're playing solo, you can control one character or several, and you are trying to complete whatever mission that you have in order to get off the ship and survive. Meanwhile, there's an alien or several aliens um, stalking around trying to kill you. It's very scary, um, but cinematic. Lots of swing, not if you don't like that. There are dice involved. One of my all-time favorites. Um, Final Girl is... I'm not as hyped. Oh! Woo, there's blades. Um, Final Girl... Hello. I'm not as hyped as others, so this is Series 2. But you know what? I really am finding that I enjoy it. Um, so this is based on scary movies from the 80s, 90s, that kind of thing. Some of them... Series 1 was not my thing, so I don't have anything from Series 1 other than the Birds expansion, the Terror from Above. This is what the inside looks like. You've got um, the VCR top has the play mats and then the feature films in there. So if you want to play Final Girl, I've talked about it plenty. You have to buy the base game box. Um, and then you buy feature films for what you want to play as. And what it is is you play as a Final Girl. There's two in each one of these. You can buy them individually. And I got this at Cape Fear Games. In the Ding and Dent, I'm a big fan of Ding and Dent. Um, so that's where I got that Nemesis Lockdown Stretch Goals was from GameFound. Nemesis Base Game I got from Cape Fear Games. And I told you about the others. Yes, I told you about the others. Anyway, in this, um, you play as the final girl against whatever villain is in the feature film. And you also have a location for each of these. They're all interchangeable. So any final girl can go against any villain, can go in any location. So that's one of the main features is the interchangeability. If you defeat the villain, then you win. Um, there's lots of swing. You're going to die a lot, but it is cinematic and in some ways uh, kind of humorous, if you can imagine that. So uh, this series two is a is a hit for me, and it's a keeper. Oh, boy. Get over there. Okay. Big boxes. Hello. Let's get another. Right here. Okay. Last of the medium boxes. You can see how these start going pretty fast once we get through a lot of the smaller box games. Never cut toward you. Never cut toward you. There we go. Cut away from it. Or sideways. Okay, so there's some in here that are going straight to um, trade or thrift store. Boom. Let's start here. Time Stories Experience. Uh, I talked about Time Stories in previous videos. This one is for one to four players, and it introduces some kind of leveling up experience mode. I haven't played it yet, but it is a keeper because I really... Really am looking forward to Time Stories a lot. Ninjak, the Valiant card game, was given to me my, by my buddy Dylan. It is a one to six player card game. I, I haven't played it, so I can't review it. Um, it looks like a card game where you're fighting off in this Ninjak universe. But it actually looks fun. Against other games, I'm probably not going to be able to get it out. So I'm going to trade that on. Okay, same thing with New York 1901. It does not have a solo. Does it have a solo mode? I think it's, yeah, two to four players, no solo mode. The theme interests me. I love turn of the 20th century. The idea that you're building up New York looks super fun, but no solo mode. I'm not going to get a group to play this. It's getting traded on. 
Uh, Lord of the Rings, Journeys of Middle-Earth, I have completed. This is a cooperative app-based, um, but you're actually on a map, you're moving characters, but the app controls how you fight your enemy opponents. It's based on Lord of the Rings. Um, it's not like a huge character storytelling thing, but you are going on an adventure. Through 10 missions, I only have the base game. You pick, you can play cooperatively, or you can play as two or more characters solo in which you get to level up your character get special abilities it is card based there are no dice so it's based on you um, thinning out your deck or complicating your deck whatever it's a deck builder so that you can play abilities as you go up against enemies to fight bosses in the final mission i've already played through it i thought about trading it since i finished it it is a fantastic game and i would love to play the expansions um but since I have other campaign games, I don't know that this one's going to make it. Though, it, I mean, it's fantastic. Oh my goodness. If you like Lord of the Rings, you like a campaign game, uh, RPG, then it's great. But I think, I think I might end up trading it. It's one to five players just because I have other campaign games to get through. Mm. Torn on that what do you let me know in the comment what you think realistically am i going to get it to the table again when i want to finish like vanguard in either field probably not so it is probably going to get traded i got that at cape fear games that's boy that's a rough one that's rough should i keep it just for you know just to keep it, or should I let someone else play it? Xeno Shift Redmire, I got at um, Ollie's for a discount for 10 bucks or something. And I've heard good things about it. One to four players. I don't know anything about it. Um, a strategic defense deck builder. Realistically, I'm not going to get it to the table. So that will get traded. Omicron Protocol. I bought this at PAX Unplugged from the publisher's booth. This is... Um, a good introduction almost to wargaming, but it is solo, one to four players, um, or to, what do you, not wargaming, what is this called? Um, it's miniatures. It's a miniatures game. Okay, so an introduction to miniatures. It has a nice tutorial, actually. It really walks you through. If you're interested in getting into miniature duels, then this is great. So it's either a versus where you control a team versus another team in the cyberpunk world. Uh, there's a whole storyline with like 10 missions or something like that that you can go through of escalating difficulty and changing boards, um, different characters, main characters with asymmetric abilities, and you can go versus each other or you can play solo against the AI opponent. And it's a fantastic AI opponent. There is some bit of a learning curve as there is area movement, you know, and anytime there's an AI with area movement, it's a little more complicated, but they did a good job. I loved it. Am I going to get it to the table again? I don't think so. So even though it looks very special, um, I am willing to trade it on if I need the space. This is kind of like the Lord of the Rings one where um, it, it can go. It can go. Power Rangers, Heroes of the... Just because of the complexity, I'm probably not going to play it solo. So, and I don't have a... Um, I don't have a group that I will probably get to play that with. So, it's going to go. All right. Power Rangers, Heroes of the Grid. I got to play this cooperatively. Really enjoyed it. It's not actually... It doesn't say it's a solo game. So, if you want to play it cooperative, you have to control several characters so several hands but you can play it solo i'm keeping it not for solo i'll never play it solo but i will play it cooperatively uh again so this one you are on a grid you're on a grid you can see right here in mighty Morphin power rangers land where you are facing off against the gummy gumbers or whatever those villain guys are and various bosses so it's kind of like a um, the pandemic putting out fires, you know, they're popping up all over the place. You're fighting them with your Power Rangers. You get to Mighty Morphinate into, you know, Tyrannosaur Man 
or whatever, and then into gigantic Mecha Man, whatever they're called, and the you know the evil lady there. You beat the boss, you win. It is a deck builder where you are building up your abilities and playing in order to fight. No dice. Oh yeah, no, there are dice. There are dice. There are dice. Yeah, it's a keeper. All right, small box. I need to put stuff away. We made it through the medium boxes, so we are we are doing pretty good. So let's get this. There we go, right here. Okay. And these small boxes, they don't really hold much, but that's why I got it, because I got those, I got large boxes, and I was like, it's not good to have this many games. It's unnecessarily heavy. Ooh, we got some. This is a fast one, but we got some good ones in here. Okay, um, postcard game from Yeast Games. It's just a little postcard game, so looking forward to playing that. And Deluxe Components for Honey Buzz, one of my favorite. That is an absolute keeper. Why did I put both of those over there? Keeper, um, I guess on the small games shelf. Only thing I don't like about the Deluxe Components and Honey Buzz as, as an issue is the Deluxe Components don't fit in the original game box. And is Elf Creek Games gone? Like I saw that Honey Buzz is now on sale at Walmart, I think. Um, oh yeah, where did I get these games? Power Rangers, I got from Cape Fear Games. I told you about Omicron Protocol. We're all caught up. The deluxe components I got from Cape Fear Games as well. And then here are my little plastic bags to go in something, for something, somewhere, extra plastic bags. But the other thing is, are they out of business? Like what happened to Honey Buzz Fall Flavors? Did it deliver or did they just bail? Why are they at Walmart and not delivering Fall flat. What happened? If anybody knows, I don't know. I didn't back it because I was going to buy it when it came to the game store. And they're waiting to receive it. But it's been like 20 years or 10. These are all just empty bags and components, basic components from Robinson Crusoe. Since I have the deluxe, I don't need them. They don't fit in the box, but maybe a publisher or a game designer excuse me, a game designer wants extra components, let me know. I will send them to you. It's cool by me. Last, there we go. More, you know, Robinson Crusoe basic dice. I got this Final Girl, the uh, mystery box. It's like a randomizer where it randomly picks a location and hero or something like that for you to play. I haven't used it yet, uh, but I'll, I'll keep it for that. Only two games in here. Halls of Hagrid got my game of the year last year, sent to me by the publisher. Solo only game. Watch my playthrough, a discussion of it. Halls of Hagrid is basically a war game, but it's it's like a war game for non-war gamers, right? So this is if you enjoy a nice Euro. What you're doing is you are doing a standoff. You are in Hagra, it's historically accurate during World War II, where there's a siege coming against you. You are trying to hold your stronghold to survive the siege for an honorable surrender, because that's how things happened. So to do that, what you're doing is you're placing your different troops on different action spaces, which are upgradable and changeable, in order to take the actions you need, defend the walls, heal the sick, things like that, send them out on supply runs, and they go out on this adventure supply runs, and they have to evade patrols. Patrols are trying to find you. The game gets harder as it goes through the stages of like Siege 1, Siege 2, and then the final attack and all that stuff. And you just have to survive it. So it's a survival game that's also a war game. It's a bridge. This game is a bridge. Even I could learn it. So you can learn it too. Beautiful. Absolute keeper. Are you ready for this one? I almost, I don't know if I can take it out of the box. Let's get some action there we go okay scythe and goodbye box and plastic get down all right the big box right here so i have in here all of size everything i don't have deluxe components i never did get those i got everything in here from cape fear games um size if you know about it is a one to five player Area control game, um, more of a war of attrition. It's not so much a battle game. You're trying to avoid war. You place 
uh, you you have an action board where you, you take certain actions and place workers. You know what? That's not going to do any good because you can't see underneath all that without me destroying everything. So yeah, you don't get to do that. Anyway, it takes place in a fictional steampunk post World War One war, I believe. Um, Legendary Encounters is a continuation of it. Artwork's beautiful. It can be, if you're playing multiplayer, whoever plays it the most wins, and that's a critique of it, so it's more of like a tournament-style game. If you enjoy that, asymmetrical powers as you play as different ruling powers, the Rusviet and um, Paulsviet. I forget all the different names that you have, but it does have a campaign mode, which is what I enjoyed. So Rise of Fenris, I loved. Not everybody loves it, because it also turns the game into a sandbox, right? Um, there's expansions with new, so you can play up to six different nationalities, and also with Wind Gambit, like airship things that go around. So it's a beautiful, artful game. I'm going to keep it. Three more. See, those go pretty fast. I'm going to have to stack these on the shelves so I have room. But thank you for staying with me. If you're enjoying this, if any of these interest you, like, subscribe. If you want to see more, if you don't, do not subscribe. Oh, my goodness. Tell me about your collection. How about that? Let's Waltz is getting traded. I enjoy Grand Austria Hotel. I already unboxed it, discussed it in another video. Let's Waltz adds a waltzing expansion. So instead of just sending your hotel guests to the hotel rooms, you can send them to ballrooms. But it also, most key, introduces the solo mode and adds the solo mode for several different variants. Beautiful. Love this game, but the layout of the boards frustrates me a little bit. I'm enough that there are other solo Euros I will pull out first, and I'll never play this with others. So it gets traded on, even though I love it. Imperium Legends is getting traded on. I haven't played it. I have learned it. I read through the instruction booklet. I laid it out. I set it up, and the instructions are awful. Um, this is a one to four player game, uh, competitive. Um, it has a wonderfully designed AI. It's a wonderfully designed game from what I hear. I'm told to just watch a, a learning video and that helps. But the thing is, I am not looking forward to, I'm almost like dreading, like I'm playing it because I feel like I have to, because um, I hear it's so good. And I believe that it is, but because uh, I'm just not looking forward to it. I'm going to trade it on and let someone else enjoy it. Uh, so I can't tell you much about it. Actually, in here, no, I can tell you about almost all these. Red Rising is getting traded on, but I love it. This is great if you want to get, um, especially if you want to get introduced to a smart AI. I think this is a nice bridge. This is a one, two, however many players. It's so hard for me to find that one, two, six players. I did not know that. One to six players based on the books of Red Rising. Super fun deck builder where you are collecting cards from different houses that are based on different colors. Each of the colors has their own strengths and weaknesses. It's been a little while since I played it, so I honestly I can't tell you much more than that other than I enjoyed it, but I'm not going to get it to the table again. I won't be playing it with others. It doesn't knock other games out, so trade it on. There we go. Oh, yeah, where did I get these? Okay, Halls of Hegra sent from the publisher. Imperium Legends I got from Cape Fear Games. Red Rising I got from Target because it was like 7 bucks or something. It was on sale. Uh, Creature Comforts, my good buddy, the super cool Tim Coolinch, uh, Sir Meeple. Um, he makes my shirts. Um, check out Sir Meeple for some super cool board games for ones. Merch. I haven't gotten to play it. This is a one to however many. You know how I am with that player. One to five players. And it looks cute. I can't tell you about it. Am I actually going to get it to the table? I don't think so. I don't think so. But it looks really cute. Kids table board gaming. Maybe I've got some kids coming. Uh, my sister's kids coming. So I feel like I should trade it on. 
but for them, maybe it's good to learn it and see if they enjoy it because it is cute. Lovely artwork. World of Warcraft Wrath of the Lich King. This is the one pandemic game that I decided to keep. So I traded on Star Wars The Clone Wars, which is fantastic. Um, I just kind of like the artwork and gameplay in this more. Um, I know the Clone Wars was made with a lot of heart, though. I was told how each card like is based on an episode, and they did a fantastic job. Maybe I made the wrong choice. But anyway, this is Pandemic. If you know Pandemic, you're going around putting out fires. So just based in the World of Warcraft, Wrath of the Lich King universe, where you are working to complete missions. You complete all the missions, you win the game. You play as a hero of your choice against randomized Villains and Dungeons. Um, I got World of Warcraft Wrath of the Lich King at Target, actually. Right? Yes, that was at Target. Heroes Crossing. Um, Heroes Crossing I actually got at a game fair locally. So this is a North Carolina uh, publisher. And it's two to four players with an added solo mode. I love this. This is an 8-bit uh, tile placement game. Where you are playing in, is it upside down or not? I can't, it's not. Where you are playing like in those 80s, 90s, like Final Fantasy, old RPG games, Zelda, something like that. And what you are is you are the townsfolk and you are building up a town with shops to attract the heroes in order, order for the heroes to prefer your town. So the more heroes you attract, um, the better you do. So that's competitive. Solo is a pretty easy solo mode. The downside is it's just beat your own score, and it does get a little easy once you figure it out. So you have to raise like the score higher and higher. So that's kind of the downside. I would like a little more complication with the AI, but regardless, I love it so much that this is a banger. This is a keeper. Absolutely, even with its flaws there. Two more small boxes. Let me put some of these. Let me pause. And let me, let me crack my voice. Let me pause. And I'm going to put these away and everything's going to flash and you're going to be, you're not even going to know how hard I worked. Um, so teleport or, or not, or just watch me. Here we go. Rotating library. All right. What do we got? Oh, we got some exciting stuff in here. It's going to go fast though. Boy, it's going to go real fast. Okay. My blanket that I use, I place this on the table to play on it makes it easier for cards if you have like a wood table or something like that you don't have felt there you go okay here we go Quelf um, is fantastic it's it might be replaced by my uh, game that we unboxed in the first video of this whole series um, fill in the game but this is social only party game and you are flipping over cards and you have to do something like a dare or a stunt or something very embarrassed. You will be embarrassed. But with the right group, it's hilarious. It's a lot of fun. And that's it. Yeah, you, you're racing to, to win. You don't really even care who wins all that much. It's just do stupid things. So that's a keeper for the party shelves. Um, or I guess this shelf. It's fine. Great Western Trail. I haven't played. Oh, yeah. So Quelf I got from Noble Knight Games. Great Western Trail. So I got this from Cape Fear Games. One to four players. And this is Great Western Trail New Zealand. I'm looking forward to playing this with you when we do the Euro Series once I finish Tainted Grail uh, so I can rank all of the Awakened Realms games. Let me go to this stuff. That's an absolute keeper. Uh, can't wait to play it. Mysterious Package Company sent me this. This is Best Serve Cold, and this is a mystery game, and you are actually doing an autopsy. So there's a body bag in here, and you roll out, and there's like a body, and you use scissors and stuff to actually cut and do the actual autopsy. So it is a keeper. I'd like to play this with Kendall if possible. Um, it's a you know one-time playthrough. All right. Canvas is going to get traded on. It's beautiful. I got to play it solo and multiplayer. Beautiful art. I love it. I like the idea that you can hang it on the wall. It is one to however many 
that's like the quote of my life right there, is just trying to find out how many players. One to five players. It's at the top. And it's a game where you are trying to build your own paintings for points. The, the cer certain combinations are going to be worth more points depending on the award cards that get played. So it's different every time you play. What it is is you have transparent cards that overlay on top of each other to create paintings. So you're uh, buying different transparent cards with paintings on it to overlay over others to create the right combination of the prettiest painting. It is super cool. I really enjoy it, but I'm not going to play it solo again. And of the games to play with others, I don't see this coming out. So I'd rather someone else have it. Last one in here. Um, I'm not into zombies, so I held this off, and I'm not a huge Marvel fan. I'm a DC guy, but I saw this. I got this at Cape Fear Games, Marvel Zombies, The Resistance. So I'm going to try it out. I'm going to try it out, and we will see. We will see if that's a game for me or not. Or maybe it's a game for you. Um, sometimes I get games that I may or may not be interested in, but um, maybe you will be. I don't know. I don't know. Oh! Okay, this is it, folks. Last box, and then I will shelf everything and show you the small box pile over there, the used, or the, the games that are going to be traded, and then the keeper is behind me. I'm very glad to see it thinned down like this. There, I was wondering where the rest of the wingspans were. Okay, we got some good ones in here. I'm not going to talk much about wingspan. We unboxed, I'm saying unboxing as in these boxes, as we opened them up. So, Oceania, I feel the nectar is overly complicated. So, will I ever include... Probably not, but I have the Wingspan series, so it stays with it, right? Now, Asia, I did feel this was cool because you can have just a two-player versus, and for solo, it adds more player interaction, basically. The art is beautiful. So it, it is in Oceania, too. Like, have it just for the bird cards and all that, but I just feel that one's a little more complex. This one complicates things, too, but since it's standalone, I think it's fine. So, Wingspan... Asia. Uh, one to two players. So you can buy just this and not have to buy any other wingspan and you're good if you only want to play solo or with two players. If you want to play Oceania, you have to have the base game. Voila! Wheela is a solo only game. Newly out. I hear good things about it. I don't know anything about it because I haven't played it yet. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. That stays. And Wingspan, the European expansion. Now this I uh, would be comfortable almost always including because it adds some new birds and new uh, bonus cards to the Wingspan game. It doesn't add too much. So I would add this expansion. I would add the Oceania birds and bonus cards, but I might just not use the Nectar if that's possible. The Nectar is neat. It's just one extra complication. And finally, Tainted Grail. This is the next game that I'm playing. Tainted Grail is Awakened Realms. One to four players. This is a campaign game. I can't review it right here because I haven't. Um, I've just started it and opened up the tutorial. So this is this is next. And then I'm ranking all the Awakened Realms games uh, that we have covered. And then we're moving on to Euros. All right, let me put these on the shelf and show you what we've what we finished with. Here is my board game collection, right here, so you can see, right? I, I try to keep a rotating library, so not too much, but that's not all. That's not all, right? There is the small games that I haven't put in a shelf yet, so that's all these right down here. Excuse the mess of the room. We're going to clear this up and make it nice um, at some point. And these are all of what is getting traded, the small stuff to Noble Knight Games because it's easy. Like I just list it all in there, send it in one big box and they give me store credit. And then the bigger games that will actually sell used will go to Cape Fear Games. I'll do like five at a time. And if it's ding and dent because people just don't seem to want that, um, unless you're me, I love it, then I'm just taking those to a thrift store. Am I looking at the camera? Okay, that's it. Next, coming up on the channel, the next one's Unless I've already covered it, should be a game from um, the solo game of the month. 
from Gabe Barrett solo uh, uh, so something. Anyway, Gabe Barrett. Gabe. I love you all. I'll see you next time.